everyone! Today we will be making a blood jar. The material you will need for this activity is a pre-filled jar with corn syrup, water, white beads, red beads, and pearl beads. The objectives of this activity is to define the four main components that make up blood, understand the relationship of the components and how they function, and define why hydration is so important for our blood. Now that we have all of our material, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I already have the corn syrup poured into my jar. It is very thick and hard to move. This is because the corn syrup represents the plasma. Plasma is made up of protein, sugar, and other nutrients used to fuel your body. Plasma makes up a little over 50% of our blood. Next, I added the red beads, which represent the red blood cells. The red blood cells take oxygen from your lungs, and then your heart pumps the red blood cells, delivering oxygen throughout your body. The oxygen is exchanged for waste carbon dioxide. The red blood cells travel back to your lungs to drop off the carbon dioxide. This is why we exhale. The cycle is then repeated. Red blood cells make up about 45% of your blood, which is why it looks red. Next, I am adding the white beads to the jar. They represent our white blood cells. You can think of them like the superheroes of our bodies. Just like Superman or Spider-Man fighting off the bad guys, the white blood cells fight off bacteria and viruses that can cause infection and disease. If you are sick, your body will make more white blood cells to help fight off whatever is making you feel bad. When you are feeling good, your blood is only made up of about 1% of white blood cells. Now I am going to add the pearl beads. These represent the platelets. Platelets is a tricky word. Can you try saying it with me? Platelets. The pearl beads might stick in the baggie, but that's okay if you don't get them all. They are like the tiny construction workers and they quickly build clots in your blood vessels to stop blood from leaving your body when you get hurt. Platelets work by quickly going to the injury site and forming a tight mesh layer that red blood cells can't get out of, which is a clot. The clot also stops bacteria from entering the wound. Platelets can be thought of as an internal band-aid. Platelets, like white blood cells, only make up about 1% of your blood. Now it is time for the fun part. We are going to put the lid back on, screw it tightly, and shake the jar. We would expect the beads to move because in our blood vessels, blood moves fluidly. However, because the plasma is so thick, none of the beads are moving no matter how hard I shake the jar. So can you think of something that we could add to the jar so that the fluid is more able to flow or less viscous? What can we add to our bodies to make our blood flow better? I'm thinking about adding water. The water represents us drinking water to stay hydrated. If we add water, then the beads will be able to flow, just like the cells flow in our blood vessels. The way we can add water to our bodies is by staying hydrated by drinking water. Once we pour the water into the jar, we can put the lid back on and shake the jar to see how it flows. You can see this time that the beads are moving throughout the plasma mixture. The water helped make the fluid less viscous or more able to flow. So that is why it is really important to drink water throughout the day and stay hydrated so that your blood can easily flow throughout your blood vessels and throughout your body. All right, so let's review what we learned today. First, can you name the four components that make up blood? I'm thinking about the red blood cells, the white blood cells, platelets, and then finally the plasma. Can you tell me what each component of your blood does? So first, plasma is made up of nutrients used to fuel your body. Red blood cells take oxygen from your lungs and deliver it throughout your body. And then they take carbon dioxide from your body back to the lungs to be exhaled. White blood cells fight off bacteria and viruses that can cause infection and disease. And finally, platelets form clots to stop blood from leaving your body when you get hurt. Last question, why is it important to add water to blood? Can you remember? This is because it helps keep the blood fluid so it can flow throughout your body easily. We can add water to our blood by drinking water during the day and keeping hydrated. Thank you for doing the activity with me. I hope you had fun.